Hey guys, so I said my next video would be a pin packaging ASMR video, but I've changed my mind because I'm scared too many people are gonna unsubscribe. So I posted it to my vlog channel. So it still exists, it's just on my other channel. I also haven't posted in a while and I didn't want that to be the video I come back with. So it's on the vlog channel and today we're doing a mystery box video. How it works is you guys send me packages and then I open them on camera and use the supplies inside to make art. It's just fun to try new art supplies from you guys and it's fun to include you guys in the video to some capacity. And speaking of trying new things, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community where you can find video tutorials on all kinds of creative subjects. They have thousands upon thousands of classes, stuff like drawing, painting, animating, and even some more businessy stuff like turning your hobbies into a career. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to the classes so you can look around and see which ones interest you. A class that I watched recently which I found to be very helpful is called Pricing Your Work, How to Value Your Work as a Freelancer by Peggy Dean. I was very curious what she would say because not everyone gives the same advice on pricing your work but this video was extremely useful and I agreed with the stuff she said. She covers freelance work, pricing products, licensing your artwork, selling your products wholesale. If you don't have Skillshare already, it is very affordable. The annual plan runs you less than $10 a month. So compared to other forms of art education, it is a really good price. And on top of that, if you use my link in the video description, you get your first two months for free. So thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get into the mystery box. It came from Leanne and it came all the way from Hawaii. So I'm very excited to see what's in here. Okay, here we go. Part of the area where I censored is where I need to cut. <laughs> How does this open? Oh, I think there's more tape on the side. Okay, here we go. Er, wait, am I still doing this right? <laughs> is there a tab? Oh yeah, okay, okay. Here we go. Maybe let's pull it all out. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my. There's so much in here. Holy smokes. <laughs> okay. I guess let's start with this because this looks like the letter. Okay. That's cute. Look at the glitter. Oh, oh, lift to reveal art supplies. Okay, okay. We don't want it spoiled, so we'll check that after. Hey Bailey, I'm so happy you're doing this new series. When I got your email, I was actually so surprised and excited. No spoilers for what's inside the box, but I had a hard time sticking to a color scheme, so I gave you a bunch of color options to choose from. Hope that's okay. I'm also kind of worried I forgot to include something you'll need, so I apologize in advance. Not sure if you'll remember, but when you still had a P.O. box, I sent you a bunch of snacks from Hawaii and planner-type decorators. I had so much fun putting this box together, and I remember how much fun it was then as well. I look forward to seeing what you create. Aloha, Leanne. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna lift the thing. We're not gonna lift the flap. We're gonna keep it a surprise. So. The letter was attached to this, so am I supposed to open this first? Oh, I see paints of some kind, a paint palette. Oh my god, they're the fine techs. I have the gold fine tech palette, but I don't have the color set like this. That's fancy. Uh, I'll just throw all the paper over there for now. Woohoo! Future Bailey's problem. This feels really light. Oh my goodness! Sponges. Five one hundred percent natural sea sponges. Ah! Next, this is pretty heavy. Oh! Whoa! 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 There's actually. Okay, these are all glitters but there are different kinds. This is a very fine glitter. This is a very coarse glitter. This is kind of an in-between. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and what is this? That looks crazy. What even? It's like a super fine powder and it's got this metallic property to it. Next, let's open this one. 
<gasps> microns? I'm running out of microns because mine are all so old. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been thinking I need to buy some new ones and here they are. <gasps> the microns are great liners. Oh my God. There are six tips in this one. 005, 03, 08, one brush and, is that a pencil? I think it is. Oh, cool. YouTube, that's where we are right now. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> I'm embarrassing myself. <laughs> Something cylindrical. Elmer's Craft Bond. Ooh, smart to wrap it <laughs> in the plastic. Craft Bond all purpose glue, strong wet tack, dries clear, remains flexible, no run formula. It wants to be freed. <laughs> Let's open this little guy next. Faber Castell Pit Artist Pens. Metallic. <gasps> we got some metallic glitters. We've got some metallic pens. This is about to get shiny. There's one silver, one gold. 1.5 millimeter. Cool. I'll be I'll be swatching this stuff in a minute once we're done unwrapping it all. Oh, this feels like some kind of tape. We yeah, have masking tape. Oh my, you were very thorough with the items. <laughs> I'm assuming this might be to tape down the paper because there is the fine tech watercolor. We'll see. I gotta keep unwrapping. Let's see where this is going. more in there. It's trapped. It's trapped. Oh, there was quite a few things in there. Prismacolor Magic Rub. Sounds like a sketchy massage parlor. Prismacolor Premier Magic Rub Eraser. Vinyl erasers that are designed to erase delicate drawings cleanly, absorbs graphite, and erases India ink. Erases India ink? And there are some other erasers. Oh my god, these are so cute and tiny. I don't know what it says, but look at them. Look at these little babies. Okay. <laughs> and then in here, sliding out, we have General's Pastel Chalk. So they're white chalk pastel pencils and they have erasers on them, which is very interesting. I like how there's two, even though there's no possible way I could use up two of them. <laughs> you guys are spoiling me a little too much. Salt. <gasps> For watercolor effect? Ooh, probably, probably. And it's the big coarse stuff too. Mm, 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 mm. I wonder if there's more watercolor in here somewhere. Big boy, big boy. <gasps> I was right. Look at all those. Angora watercolors made in Germany, non-toxic. That's a big boy right there. Oh my gosh. Studio 71 color pencils. 36 piece. Ideal for shading and blending, wide spectrum of brilliant colors, pre-sharpened. There's so much stuff. Like, okay, I say this pretty much every time, but you guys do not need to send me this much stuff because like, I really only need a few items to be able to create art with. So, you know, don't, don't feel like you need to go this extreme with it. But it's still very much appreciated, so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Leanne. Oh my god, like look at all these brushes! Look at all these! She could have sent one, maybe two. No, we have a set of 25. All kinds of shapes and sizes. There's even palette knives in there. Wow. Liner round shader, filet, fan, wash, angular, and palette knives. Then, <laughs> there's more. We have some sponge brushes. And, oh my god, some more! Leanne! <laughs> we have more brushes. Princeton Art and Brush Company Real Value. Brush Selection. Synthetic hair. Fancy, fancy. These look nice. Jesus. <laughs> so many brushes. <laughs> then we have this, which I'm assuming is some kind of paper. <laughs> Can I just slip it out? Oh my god. Oh, this is huge. This is actually perfect because I can send it back in this. Because I send the original art back to the person who sent the box, plus a bunch of other goodies and some of my merch and stuff like that. So I'm going to reuse that. 
This looks like some nice, thick textured paper. Looks like there are four sheets total. Okay, oh my. <laughs> okay, we gotta read what's in the note. We gotta read the description. I don't even know where to put them all. <laughs> We're running out of space. <laughs> Seriously, this is nuts. Okay, wait. Okay. Yeah, this is what I have to read. Glue, you can go there. So, lift to reveal art supplies. So the paper is Canson XL watercolor paper. It really is XL, isn't it? <laughs> it's huge. Black, gold, and silver liners, brushes, colored pencils, watercolors, two sets, glitter. You don't have to use all the colors. I just wanted to give you options. Glue, erasers, white pencils, salt, not for eating, lol, for texturing, sponges for texturing, tape, no masking fluid on purpose. I'm pretty sure that's everything. If I missed anything, that will be a surprise to me too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leanne, for sending this box. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I'm going to start by swatching, but yeah, I'll have to think about what I'm going to make with all this. So the first thing I had to do was take the packaging off all the items because there's just so many of them and I had to organize them because I only have so much room on my desk for all this so I had to put them in containers just to keep things somewhat organized so I slid the pencils into this little plastic drawer that I have and I started unwrapping everything else. I have a square spongebob mug where I'm putting all the, the paint brushes in and I also pulled out a couple little drawers that I have that are from a jewelry box. I don't have the jewelry box anymore, but I kept the drawers because I think the drawers are cute. So the sponges went in one, the erasers and salt went in another, and then all the pencils and pens went into this little glass jar that I had. So here's me just organizing it all, trying to get it to all fit on the desk. Then I started swatching and I don't know why I started swatching right here for this, like right there on the paper. <laughs> it's a very disorganized swatch and the white pearlescent ones you can't even see so it was just pure mess i don't know why i did it that way it bothers me to look at it i guess you know this isn't this isn't pinterest this is real life but just, i'm like bailey what were you doing here <laughs> These aren't, these aren't pretty swatches. Then I swatched the paints and I was trying to swatch them in the order they were on the pan so I could easily locate which color is which when I go to use them later, but I was running out of space because of how I swatched the metallic ones and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and then I did the pencil crayons and I'm like, these ones are going to be nice. And so I was thinking, okay, I can do three rows of 13 because there's 36 of them. Then at the end, I was like, wait, I ran out of space. And I thought, Bailey, there's 36, not 39. You can't divide by 30. <laughs> So I just kept messing up the swatches, but whatever. They're there. All we need to know is what they look like on the paper. So it's fine. It's fine. At least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> I also tested out the salt and it worked pretty well. And then I tested out using the sponge. It doesn't create texture in existing paint, but you can dip it in the paint to create a little scratchy texture. So then I had to figure out what the heck am I drawing with all this stuff? It's tricky when you have so many supplies because you want to incorporate all of them. And I had this huge paper to work on and I thought, why don't I do some kind of big busy scene? So immediately I thought of my bun buns because I do a series of artwork centered around these little bunny characters and I haven't done a big bun scene in a while. In one of my recent videos, I did do one where they're in this clay pot and it's like their little home. It was just a small drawing, but I thought, you know, let's do a big busy scene because we have this huge paper and it would work really well with the microns, the watercolor and the pencils. Maybe not so much for the glitter and metallic paints, but I just thought, hey, I'll deal with that when the time comes. So I started planning out the scene. I did a whole bunch of little thumbnails and I thought of doing a birthday party because that's pretty hectic. So there'd be this living room scene and maybe have some of the kitchen table visible as well. And there's just a bunch of little children bunnies. And then there's one parent who just looks dissatisfied because of all the chaos she has to deal with. So that was the plan. And I started sketching it out. I started with a grid just to get down the perspective. It's not quite isometric perspective, but it's pretty close because the lines don't taper much as they go towards the horizon. So it's nothing extreme in terms of perspective. Borderline isometric. <laughs> now I'm not a big fan of drawing furniture and geometric shapes in general. That's why I draw a lot of characters. So trying to put them in a setting is always challenging for me. 
but I was really excited about it this time because I, I always love doing it for the bun buns. I think it's because the bunny characters themselves are very simple in design. So putting them in some kind of complex scene excites me and just gives a little something more to the artwork. So I tried my best to draw a couch, a comfy chair. I put a big area rug in there and then you can see the kitchen table peeking in and there are a couple chairs there. And I'm using a chair from my Calico Critters as a reference because Calico Critters are one of my main inspirations for the Bun Bun series. And so I wanted to incorporate the Calico Critter chair, even though the rest of them, the rest of the furniture is just made up from my memory. But I wanted that chair in there because I, I did another drawing back in the day, the artsy buns, where again, based off Calico Critters. And I think I may have referenced a Calico Critter chair specifically. Maybe not this one. I can't remember exactly what it looks like. I might've just Googled an image, but I wanted that in here because I was trying to keep the style of the artsy buns art in mind while working on this. So after getting some furniture in there, it's time to throw in some of the buns. There's gonna be one eating cake. And initially I pictured him standing on the chair with one arm leaning on the table and then the other arm going in to scoop up some cake. But I just couldn't get it to look the way I wanted to. So I just made the bunny sit down on the chair, head back, smiling, about to dig into that cake, which by the way, is carrot cake. Of course it is, of course it is. <laughs> And then the, the seat next to him is empty and there's an empty plate. I was just trying to add lots of props and details to make it look hectic. So we have a couple cups on the table too. One is knocked over. There's a crumpled up napkin. Then beside the couch, I decided to add a side table, end table there because there were no kinds of tables visible in terms of living room furniture. So I wanted to add that in. And there's a lamp there. There's even a little potted plant on there, which is a throwback to the last bun drawing I did where they had a little potted plant house. And just adding in more characters. There's the mama character back there. She just looks concerned because of all the chaos she has to deal with. And she's holding a little baby bunny that is crying, which just adds to the chaos. <laughs> she's also the only one who's clothed. I don't know why sometimes I draw clothes on them and sometimes I don't. Usually the children don't. It's just the parent characters, but sometimes I just, they're all naked sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very consistent. At least I have a more consistent style now in terms of what the bunnies look like because in the past I kept switching it up because I had no idea what I wanted, but now it's a little more consistent, especially since I started making enamel pins featuring bunny characters. So we have a little boy bunny on the couch who's tearing open presents. I wanted this to be chaotic in the sense that not every character is doing the same thing. You know, normally at a birthday party, it's like, okay, let's all go eat cake. Okay, now let's all go open presents. No, here, the kids are just running wild. They're all doing their own thing. So he's um, opening his presents. There's another one who's diving into a huge box, trying to dig something out of it, butt in the air. In the background, there's a little bunny who's swinging away at the pinata and there's candy flying out of it. They're just all over the place doing all kinds of things. There's one face down on a balloon. I don't really, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Is he just sitting there? Is he attacking the balloon? I don't even know. I just drew it that way. There's one swinging from this banner in the background. There are just little pennants hanging on it. And the bunny is just like, woohoo, swinging from the chandelier. <laughs> we have one running towards the pinata, pinata bunny. Then there's one sitting on the comfy chair and he's just sucking on the corner of a pillow. <laughs> then there's a bunny in the foreground who dropped his cake. It slid off of his plate and it's on the floor and he's looking at it sadly. Not sure if he should pick it up and still eat it. <laughs> and then there's another buddy in the middle of the room who's just playing with a toy car, being normal. And I just added a few more props and things in there, like some more presents. Oh yeah, there's a bunny hanging off the back of the couch too, who's watching the presents be unwrapped. There's wrapping paper all over the floor, bits of everything. There's a fork on the floor. Just, just adding as much detail as I can. There's also a carrot with a bite taken out of it. <laughs> yep, tons of stuff. <laughs> so at this point, I was pretty satisfied with how the sketch was looking and it was time to ink it, but not on this paper because I knew I wouldn't be able to erase all the pencil lines fully. And it's nice to be able to hang on to the original sketch. So I traced it using a light box onto another sheet of the watercolor paper and I taped the edges because I knew I'd be taping the edges later when I go to paint it 
and so there'd be a white border. And since I want that white border to also include the line art, I had to tape it down before doing the line art so the border would be there. And it's not taped down to a board yet because I need to be able to see through the paper to ink it. So it's just taped down to the back side of the paper and then I had to remove that tape and then tape it to a board later. So lots of taping involved. <laughs> I didn't include all the inking because it's just a little redundant. Like you just saw me sketch it. So I like to include some of the inking, but there's no point in showing the whole thing. So I actually just moved to the couch for the evening and finished inking it over there on the couch. <laughs> so here's the finished inks and now I'm going in and coloring it. So initially I tried going in with a little piece of sponge and blotting the background in. Then I thought, no, actually let's cover it with solid yellow and then we'll go back in with the sponge and add some texture later. So that was the plan just covering the whole thing in yellow. I was trying to use this, use a similar color scheme to when I did the artsy buns piece again, just go thrown back to that one, keeping similar colors in this. I really like the look of this yellow. It's just slightly orangey. So it's a bit of a dark yellow and it's, it's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful color. I love incorporating this into my bun bun drawings. So I had to make that the floor because it's still bright, but not not too crazy I don't know how I don't know what I'm trying to say but it's just a nice background color so I got that in right away because I knew I could use different slash darker colors for the furniture and stuff one thing I did not do which I could have done was make it get darker as we move to the back of the room instead I just kept it all the same yellow color so yeah something I could have done differently I also added some shadows underneath some of the characters and the furniture I wasn't sure how much shading I wanted to do in paint and how much I wanted to do in pencil because I knew I'd be going in later with pencil to shade things in. So I was trying to not do too much with the paints, but I thought let's at least get in some drop shadows on the furniture and some of the characters, just whoever's making contact with the yellow floor. And then I went in with my spongy and used that same color to add in some texture to the floor. I normally probably would have left it solid color, maybe just a few little areas of texture with pencil or something, but I needed to incorporate the sponge somehow. That's the tricky part with having so many supplies is I need to incorporate them to some capacity, even though when there's this much stuff, it feels like you're barely using the supplies. Like I barely use the sponge. I just used it for the the rug because I can't use it everywhere <laughs> and I thought okay I'll use the salt on the furniture so first I painted the furniture green then I thought wait no yeah I should use the salt to texture the furniture a little bit so I added water back on top of the furniture and then added the salt but it didn't really work that well because the pigment had mostly dried already so then I went back and added more green on top of it after that I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because you can't see that part yet but that's just kind of what's going through my mind. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to incorporate the salt. Where am I gonna put the salt? Okay, the furniture, but I already colored the furniture. It's just like, it was just me trying to figure out where things were gonna go. <laughs> Honestly, this scene is probably not the best choice considering the materials I had. Like it was great for certain materials like pencils, paint, the microns, but for the glitter and stuff, like I said earlier, it doesn't work so well. I could have done something where the glitters and metallic pens and stuff like that was the main focus of it instead of just being little details added on at the end. I don't know, it's tough, that's the struggle. Like how how do you use everything in one piece? Cause there's so much. Now, one thing I will say now before we get to the end of the video is that I'm not 100% happy with how the coloring turned out because of everything I had to add to it. And it just, it started to get a little bit muddy because I would smudge wet paint with my hand and things like that. Or when I went to add the salt back on the couch, it made the green run onto the bunny, run onto the background. And it was just starting to get a little bit messy. And I do really like the line art for this, which by the way, is available as a free coloring page on my website. So if you want to download it and color it for free, it's there. I guess that's my Christmas gift to you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really like the line art, but I'm still not 100% happy with how the coloring turned out. So I'm going to redo it in Copics. I know I've said this in the past where I'm like, oh, it'd be nice to redo this someday with a different medium, but I never do because there's just not time. But this one, I feel like I absolutely must, I absolutely must recolor it, but in Copics. So that will be my next video. I just, that's too much to include in one video because there's already so much that goes into these 
these mystery box videos and they're already really long. So in my next video, I'm going to color it in Copic at the same size. So we'll see how that turns out. And then I'm going to send Leanne both because why not? <laughs> She'll get this version that was painted and then the Copic version as well. I think something I did wrong is I left too much of the shading to be pencil. I just did flat color and paint and thought, oh, all of it will be shaded in pencil, but that was just a bit too much because as I began, I realized the limitations of the pencil, either I didn't have the right color or the colors just weren't dark enough. And yeah, it's str I struggled with that a little bit. I should have done more in paint. Also, something I may or may not do differently in Copic is the color of the area rug. I'm still torn about it because initially I painted it a lighter orangey brown. And then I thought, okay, this is not going to contrast against the buns enough. So then I made it this darker brown. And now I'm thinking, well, maybe it should be the same orange as the lampshade. And I'm still thinking, well, no, there's not enough value contrast between the buns. Then I thought, well, do I make it really dark? Like there's some dark brown on this, the side table beside the couch. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. I'm going to have to think about it. I mean, yeah, green could be nice if I make it so that the border is a different color and the green present is a different color. I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say, let me know what you think. But honestly, by the time you're seeing this, I'm probably already going to start coloring this. So it'll be too late. <laughs> Some of the shading that I did on the bunny in the foreground who's sitting at the kitchen table was not captured on film. And that's probably the only area where I actually do like the shading is that bunny and the chair he's sitting on. For the rest of it, it just wasn't turning out well. And like I said, I just struggled with the, the pencil colors, but I think also it's just the texture. I didn't like how textured it looked because this is very, very toothy paper. And so when you color with pencil, you see the tooth a lot. And I liked how smooth it looked with the paint. I mean, it wasn't completely smooth. It still had the painty texture to it. But once I went over with pencil, it's just like, oh, OK, this is not looking as good as I wanted it to. <laughs> and here's the part where I'm going in to try to fix the couch by adding more color to it. But another area where I screwed up is I should have shaded the couch before doing the salt stuff. I mean, it still would have bled, but I realized after the fact when I removed the salt, I was like, there's zero shading on this furniture. <laughs> And it was really hard to try to add it in later with pencil because one, like I said, there's just lots of tooth to the paper, but when you take the salt off, it leaves behind residue and that just adds more texture to it. <laughs> uh, another thing I had to do is as I colored in areas, I would have to go back in with the microns and redo the outlines. So that took forever too. So I did kind of half of it. I re re-inked it at one point and then I stopped doing that, waited till I finished the rest of it and then went back in with the microns to fix up the outlines because they just look faded when the paint is on top of them and so it's looking kind of gray and I wanted the outlines to pop a bit more so I had to go back in and fix that. I feel like I'm being really negative in this video but I'm just like what else am I going to talk about? I'm talking about the process and I did struggle a lot so I guess that's why. <laughs> like don't get me wrong I still think it's cute. I like it. It was just, it was a definite challenge. It was <laughs> definitely a challenge. Oh, and here I'm using that powdery stuff, the, <clears throat> the chromatic glitter, if you can call it that. It was like a dust. That stuff was very interesting. I wanted to incorporate it somewhere. So I did the stem of the lamp and then I made one of the bows of the present have that too. But then when I dusted it off later, it just didn't look good. So I removed it from the present and just did green glitter instead. And it was actually fun adding the glitter on, just figuring out which parts are going to get glitter and which don't. So I just did my best. I did really chunky glitter though, where I'd put down a bunch of glue and just toss the glitter on it. I maybe should have done a thinner layer of glue with a thinner layer of glitter. Maybe? I don't know. I'm torn about it. I also kind of like the look of bold glitter. Just boom, these areas are glitter. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then for the metallic paints, the fine text, I just had to add them wherever I could <laughs> like I was kind of running out of places to add these weird textured materials so I added some of the reddish fine tech to the cheeks of the bunnies and I added one of the white ones to the insides of the ears because I hadn't given those any color and I also added a bit of the white to the plates that they're eating off of oh and I used the silver metallic pen on the forks and then the gold metallic pen I didn't end up using anywhere. So all of these things just have little bits of them th 
throughout the drawing because otherwise I don't know how to incorporate them all. The glitters are so gorgeous though. There's just different sizes of glitter and just the different colors. They are, they're so pretty. I didn't even end up using most of the glitter colors in this, but oh, they're gorgeous. I'm gonna have to use them for something else someday too because I love them. Here's me redoing some of the outlines. I even had to redo the outlines around the glitter areas, which is tricky. I was taking the palette knives and trying to clean the edges like I would push the glitter and glue inwards so that it would make a straighter line then go in with the microns and do the outlines around the glitter it was it was very interesting very interesting process here <laughs> so the last step was to peel off the paint and then it was done oh I love the foreground 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 bunny eating cake love the way that turned out that's probably my favorite part of the illustration just the way it's shaded and everything too it just turned out clean whereas in other areas there was ink smudging or like the outlines got too thick or there's just like problems everywhere else basically but hey most people probably don't even notice those things as much as i do so <laughs> yeah there it is glitzy little bunny party Thank you so much, Leanne, for sending this amazing box. I'll be sending you this artwork, the Copic version, and a bunch of other goodies, just the usual that I send, like enamel pins, prints, buttons, all that fun stuff. Oh, and don't forget about the Skillshare deal. Use my link in the description to get your first two months for free. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.